Hello? What do you mean they're still busy? Oh, they can't be busy all night. Now, now listen, operator, be a sport. Try again, will you? Uh, this is my girl. I want to talk to her. Sure. Now, that's fine. Call me back as soon as you get it. Okay. Oh, no, no, please, the next dance. <laughs> oh, the happy bride to be. Shut up. Tell me, sis, sis, how's Lord Fauntleroy, the big tip? How can you bear to be separated, even for a moment, from that bean pole? Now, let me alone. Can't you see I'm not fooling? I... Oh, I don't know what's the matter with me. Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. Here, I'll fix your drink and cheer you up. Uh, no? All right, here's how. Short life and a merry one. From where I'm sitting, it looks like a long and dreary one. Listen, sis. That's because you're not in love. Maybe you're right. I don't suppose I ever will be. I've got to get married sometime. I used to think that maybe the right man would come along someday. <laughs> well, I'll keep on waiting and looking. Even after you're married to that, that fellow? Why not? He's only marrying me for the money anyway. And I'm only marrying him because... Well, because Mother and Uncle George want a title in the family. Huh. Well, here's to Uncle George. May he slip on a banana peel and break his neck. <laughs> Uncle George could never slip on anything as unrefined as that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's Alice. Hello, darling. You're darn toot and I still want Long Beach. I've been wanting him for hours. Well, I know they're there. Yes, ring them again, will you, operator? Call me back. What service? 7, 28, 29. Phew. Well, hot or cold, all men are alike. Oh, Millie, I think you're being mean, Rock. It isn't Bertie's fault. He takes a drink now and then. All his crowd does. He was brought up that way. He has more money than is good for him, and he's never had anyone to answer to. Why, you can't expect him to change in a minute. He's a grade A number one South. Pardon, dearie, I got ten of these to do. If Bertie ever took a drink of water, it'd poison him. I won't have you talking about him that way, Millie. He's going to pull himself up, and when he does, I'll marry him. Whoopee! And a load of horse feathers. Oh! Listen, when that bird marries you, I'll take the veil. You know, it's all right for a chorus girl to be a sap. In our business, you don't need brains, only legs. But there are times, Alice, when you're that dumb, I could give you a good sock in the nose. Millie. Really? Not listen, baby brain. When a guy like Bertie Lennox trails a girl like you, he's strictly on the make, see? Millie, I don't want you to talk like all that. All right, all right. But the only orange blossoms you'll ever see will come out of a cocktail shape. Millie, I can't stand it. It isn't well, fair. Why don't you let me alone? Hello. Oh, just a minute. Here you are, baby. It's your boyfriend. Hello. Hello, Bertie. No, it's nothing. Millie's been teasing me again. Well, cheer up. Yeah, yeah I'm coming over, and I'll bring a couple of bottles, and we can toast to Marion over there. Sure, we'll make whoopee. Of course I'm not tight. No, I've only had a few drinks to congratulate my sister. <laughs> you can't let your sister get engaged without congratulating her, can you? Of course not. Huh? Well, Marion, Alice wants to congratulate you. Just a minute, Alice. Be right. Hello, Alice. I'm so happy for you. Isn't it wonderful? Tell me, are you terribly... Terribly in love? Why? Oh, of course I am. Well, I wouldn't be getting married if I weren't just terribly in love, would I? Oh, thank you. Goodbye. Am I terribly, terribly in love? Oh, yes. <laughs> You won't forget that little 
little bit about the lion and the eagle, will you? Jolly good if I do say so myself. No, we won't forget that for a long time, Lord Rockingham. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good, good night. night. Good night. Thank good you night. very much. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Harry, are you sure that Rockingham is the right man for Marion? Why, Rossi, Arthur is a member of one of the old and most conservative families of yours. Yes, and just think how old yours is. I'm surprised at your attitude, Rossi. A girl as unmanageable as Marion might easily have married some perfectly impossible person. The thing that we know to happen even to the best people. I know all that. But I'm still not sure that I want that man to be the father of my grandchildren. devilish annoying if I had to kiss the wrong girl. Depends on her taste, Rocky. It probably would be annoying. Her taste? Oh, yes, lipstick, of course. <laughs> you know, you know, yes, I didn't quite get you at first. You haven't quite got me yet. Never mind, uh, it won't be long until the wedding. Rocky, are you terribly, terribly much in love with me? Why, what a strange question. Yes, that seems to be the general opinion. I'm going. I don't follow. Good. Look okay, here, what's the matter? Rocky, please don't touch me. Let me go, will you? Let me go, Rocky. A glass is all. You can't treat me like this. You say she can. Big stiff. Bertie, please don't start anything. I'm all mixed up. Come on, I want to go get some mail. Sure, kid. Listen. Wonderful party, Rockingham. I say, Grafton, what would you do if someone called you a large stiff? A what? A large stiff. Why, I refuse to meet him so soon. Well, I can't refuse to meet my future brother-in-law. You mean Bertie calls you a... a large stiff? Yes, I suppose his associations are responsible for his manner. His associations? Of course, it's none of my business, but as I'm practically a member of the family, I think that you should know the word. Bertie is going to marry a chorus girl. A chorus girl? Oh, this is dreadful. Are you absolutely sure? Uh, who is she? Do you know her? Well, it so happens that I know her roommate, that is, very slightly. It, it can't, it can't be true. Well, there's not a shadow of a doubt of it. They're constantly seen lunching, teaing, dining, and dancing together. Every club in town is buzzing with it. Where is Bertie? He just left her with Marion. Marion has left her own engagement party? Oh, this is dreadful. We will kill her mother. We mustn't tell her. This is dreadful. We, we must do something. Yes, but what? We must think. An excellent suggestion. Joaquin, are you thinking? I think so. Come on in, sis. Alice will be glad to see you. No, Betty. I want to be alone. I don't know what's the matter with me. You know, I've never felt like this before. Oh, sure. I understand. Well, you drive on home, sis, and I'll taxi you back. 
Oh, oh, you better take this. It's turning cool. I wouldn't leave my car on that loose sand too long, ma'am. You have to get stuck. Well, I can take care of my own car, thank you. Yes, ma'am. You sure can. Yes, ma'am. I can see from the way you handle that stick that an automobile has no secrets for you. Sure gives me pleasure to see you so expert. The wonderful thing the way gals are improving their learning these days. Used to be when a gal got stuck, she'd ask the nearest man to help her. Oh, you haven't got a cigarette about you, have you? There's a package on the seat of the car. Thank you. Thank you. Sure do like to smoke after a swim. Can't think of anything nicer than having just one. Be sitting here smoking and watching a pretty girl repairing a car. Oh, shut up. I've never heard such a gabby useless, stupid, boorish, big idiot in all my life. Why don't you get up and help me, you big boob? Who, me? You want I should help you? I thought you told me to mind my own business. I don't mind helping you if you're sure it won't spoil your fun. I'll give you $10 if you get this car out of here. No, ma'am. 20 No, ma'am. How much do you want, you big grafter? All you got to do is say you're sorry you was rude to me. I'm sorry. Furthermore, you got to say you don't know nothing about cars at all. Just for your own good. I won't do it. Then sit there. At all. At all. Now we can commence. Can you get it out of here? I can try. Now you put this little board under the wheel. But how can I? It's stuck in the sand. It ain't gonna be there long. Now, 
Now, when the wheel comes up, you stick the board under. You flatter yourself. Be that as it may, when that wheel comes up, you stick the board under. Yes, sir. You know why men was made stronger than women? Why? Because they never was intended for to be their equal. Don't forget that. Women was intended to be ornaments. To charm their men in their lighter moments and soothe them when they're tired. I don't like you. Yes, ma'am. You make me sick. Yes, ma'am. I never want to see you again. Yes, ma'am. You come swimming here every night? Mostly. Well, then I'll avoid this place hereafter. It's okay with me. Will you be swimming here tomorrow night? Sure will. I wouldn't miss my swim for anything. Oh, before I forget. Yes, ma'am? I think you're a big mug. Marion can take care of herself. There's nothing to be upset about. How can you say such a thing? To leave her own party and rush off into the night like a... Hyena, keep your feathers on, George. Don't be a fool. I have no feathers. It's unforgivable. Simply unforgivable. And of course, nobody believed that story about her sudden illness. Hello, everybody. Party over? Well, I suppose I'm in wrong. Marion. What were you thinking of after all your father and I have done? Before? I'm sorry I left, but I couldn't stand it any longer. I had to get away. Well, I, I can't just explain it, but everything seemed to be crowding in around me. I had to get out. I, I just thought I'd choke. You understand? Don't you, Dad? Of course I do. Now, you run upstairs like a good little girl and get a good night's sleep, huh? Thank you, Father. Good night. Good night. What is the matter with her? Oh, there's nothing the matter with her, George. It's just that she's tired of this sort of thing, that's all. I know how she feels. I'd like to get away myself sometimes. Ronson! Well, I, I'm sorry, Carrie. Good night. I don't know what the boy's been up to, but I know that he would never think of marrying that kind of woman. After all, George, he's my son, Carrie's son. Oh, just a minute, Bertha. What is it? Something little boys shouldn't hear? Sit down. We've been talking about you. Your uncle tells me that there's a rumor that you're engaged to a chorus girl. Well, it's more than a rumor, Dad. I am. I'm sure you don't mean that literally, son. You needn't be afraid to tell me. It's just a little adventure, eh? No, sir. It isn't just a little adventure. I suppose you're not paying her bills. She's not that kind. None of them are. I'll take your word for it, son. But you know what it'll mean to your mother if this affair goes on. A mother's got to stand for it sooner or later. You intend to marry this girl? I do. Do you realize what you're doing, Bertie? Perfectly, sir. I appreciate that you've always been honest with me. I've always trusted you. I always want to. But I can't pretend that this isn't pretty much of a blow. Well, I realize that, Dad, but if you knew Alice, you... I'd rather not talk about it. All I ask is that you don't get married without first letting me know. Very well, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. <laughs> 
Good night, Dad. Good night, Uncle George. Well, do you believe me now? What are you going to do? I don't know. But I do. You've got to get hold of this girl, pay her, and get her out of the way. Yes, but how? Rockingham is going to arrange it. Rockingham? Yes, he knows the girl she lives with. He's going to invite them to have dinner with us at Luigi's tomorrow night. What? So it's perfectly all right. We are supposed to be theatrical agents, friends of his. It's not a very pleasant idea. I'd like to take a look at the girl. Yes, in this way she'll be off her guard. You can see just what sort of creature she is. I'll think it over. Good heavens, man, don't you realize there's no time to lose? If this thing gets into the papers, it will kill Carrie. Perhaps you're right. Ronson, isn't Marion home yet? Why, what's the matter? What are you two talking about? Just a little matter of business, Carrie. <laughs> what is it? What's happened now? Oh, you two are conspiring. Why, I can't bear it. I can't bear it. I can't. Now, 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 Carrie, do be reasonable. Oh, something has happened. I insist upon knowing the truth. I insist upon it. Very well. If you must know, Carrie, George and I are planning to have supper with a couple of chorus girls. Bronson, why can't you ever be serious? You and George with a couple of chorus girls. <laughs> That's the only funny thing I've heard for days. <laughs> yes, it is funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Oh, heavens, is that you? Sure, it's me. I thought you hung out further up the beach. I didn't know this was the spot you uh, infested. Yes, ma'am. You made a bad mistake. So if you like, although I don't have to, I'll drag myself up yon. Oh, now that you're here, you might as well stay. Yeah, I figured you'd come to that conclusion. You know, I think you're the most objectionable man I've ever met in all my life. You didn't come down here to tell me that, did you? Yes, I did. Yeah, I figured you would. No woman could say enough mean things to a man in just one night. She'd be bound to think of something she forgot after she got home and come down the next night and ball him out some more. You know quite a lot about women, don't you? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I've looked them over, thither and yon, quite thoroughly. But never have I seen one so completely and thoroughly and confoundedly sweet as you all appear to be. Me? Yes, ma'am. Are you trying to tell me in that funny English you speak that you like me? Those are my sentiments. Oh, well, I hate you. Fine, now I can go for another swim. Oh, if you had a bathing suit with you, you'd come with me. But you probably can't swim anyway. I can swim. <laughs> like you drive a car, maybe? I can swim better than you can. Oh, all right. Bring down your bathing suit sometime and show me. I'm from Missouri. I, um, I brought my bathing suit. In that? Well, I ain't stopping you. The ocean belongs to everybody. Um, would you like me to go in with you? You can come if you want to. But, uh, would you like me to? <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> 
You think I could change here on the beach? Well, I ain't a peeker if that's what you're worrying about. Well, I'll change back of the car. <laughs> I suppose when the world was young, Adam and Eve stood just like this in the Garden of Eden. What do you suppose they thought about? Oh, I reckon about the same sort of things we're thinking. What were you thinking about? About you. <laughs> That's funny. I was thinking about you. <laughs> <laughs> were your thoughts respectable? No. Neither were mine. Maybe we'd better go in swimming. Maybe we have. <laughs> oh, come on! By the way, what's your name? Henry. Mine's Marion. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> You don't swim bad for a girl. You're not so rotten yourself. I like to be by your side. Do you like to have me by your side? Yeah, it sort of pleases me. <laughs> I think I'd like to be by your side always. <laughs> I got some water in my ear. Didn't hear what you said. I said, uh, I think I'm getting tired. Oh, roll over and rest your head on my arm. Oh, gee, I'm happy. I think I'm happier than I've ever been before in all my life. I am, too. Oh. <laughs> You'll get us drowned. <laughs> We'd better turn back. I don't want to turn back. You turn back or I'll spank you. Oh, yeah? Honey, I ain't afraid of no woman. Now you turn back or I'll squash you. Try. Oh, yeah? Now you keep on going, or I'll give you some more. Oh, oh, I'll just put my coat around me and dry off when I get home. Heaven, sis, don't tell me you're tight. No, bud. But I guess it feels just the same. What's the matter with you? Shh. I'm in love. Who with? Henry. Henry? Well, there are millions of Henrys. Henry who? I don't know. Just Henry. <laughs> Come on. Sleep it off. I'll go in the back way. I don't want to talk to anybody. Such a wonderful dream. I don't ever want to wake up. How do you take your tea, Rocky? 
Just a dash of soda and no ice. Your tea, foolish. I'm sorry. I mean, just a little cream and no sugar. Is anything wrong with me, Rocky? Oh, have I aged since you saw me last? No, but Marion, after all, you are engaged to me. And... Yes, you know, I seem to remember we were engaged. Only this morning, I noticed a ring on my dressing table. And I said to myself, now, who gave me that? Then your face sort of came back to me. Well, upon my soul. Hmm. Here, old thing. Look here, Marion, you're not giving me the chuck. Sorry, but I am. Rocky, you wouldn't want a wife who didn't really love you now, would you? Well, I... I suppose not, but you know it's an awful shock. Well, it's your own fault. You must be a weak character. I wouldn't have lost interest in you. Weak? I? Weak? A strong man would have held me and made me a better woman. But I'm no animal trainer. No, darling. You're a whole circus. <laughs> you know, you are a comic. You break my heart, but you do make me laugh. You act as if your heart's broken. Rocky? You know, we would have lasted about a week. It were, well, perhaps all right. I know I am. But it was nice being engaged to you. Well, thanks, no end. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> Cheerio. And uh, mm -hmm. let me know when you find your, your animal trainer, Will. <laughs> yes, I will. Bye. Goodbye. Now, listen, Alice, I won't have you running around with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. If you don't think any more of me than that, I take back what I said last night. Goodbye. Where's Rockingham? Heavens, Bertie, what's he done to you? You've got murder in your eyes. He's done plenty. Oh, but what, honey? He's invited Alice to go to supper with him and some friends tonight. And she broke an engagement with me to go. Oh, you're joking. I am not. She insists that she owes it to Millie to go. These birds are theatrical agents. And Millie's persuaded her that it might mean a better job for them. But Rocky, the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I don't see why you should think it's funny. A man that's engaged to you. But I'm not engaged to him any longer, darling. What? No, I just broke the fatal news. But this should... Uh, darling, I'll tell you all about it later. I've simply got to duck before Mother finds out. Well, I'm glad it's all. First, because he's a total idiot, and second, because I'm going to suck him in the jaw. Now, please be sensible, Bertie. After all, you can trust Alice. I'll be sensible, all right. Why, it's Terry. So happy Marion and Arthur must have made it up with a little sound coming from the two little lovebirds. Lovebirds. Why, Bertie, where did Marion and Arthur go? In opposite directions, that's all I know. Well, what do you mean, Bertie? I, well, I think Sister would rather that I did tell you. Now, don't get excited, Carrie. She, she's broken her engagement. She's what? She's broken her engagement. Don't! Don't! Yes, go get the smelling no. salts, Bertie. Don't no, get excited now, dear. It's all right, but don't you don't have to worry. Don't be it. Poor Carrie. Oh. Now, don't make matters worse, George. It's not a tragedy. Oh, what will his family think? Oh, it's too dreadful. The Bronson will speak for Marion. He'll force her to do the right thing. I'm certainly not going to force my daughter to marry a man she doesn't love. Bronson. I'm sorry, Mother, but you had to hear it sometime. She didn't have to hear it. It didn't have to happen. It wouldn't have happened if Marion hadn't been a silly, spoiled little fool. Now, see here, George. Don't you think that you ought to hear Marion's side of the story first? I must talk to Arthur. Where is the poor boy? I'll see him tonight, dear, and have a chat with him. Take you. Not long. Oh, was it badly hurt? No. 
Women have ought to be allowed to drive cars. It was a man's fault. Yeah, that's what women always say. Well, it was, I tell you. Well, have it your own way, lady. Have it your own way. I'll be a son of a seeker. Henry! Henry! Henry, come out from the day. I want to talk to you. Henry! Henry, listen to me. Henry! You'll get that pretty dress of yours all dirty under here, Miss Lennox. How long have you been working here? Two days. Oh, that's why you didn't know who I was then. I heard a lot about the wild Lennox youngster, but I hadn't figured she was my little friend down at the beach. Well, what difference does it make if I am Miss Lennox? Henry, I don't mind if you're a chauffeur, darling. I'm not a chauffeur. I'm a mechanic, where I could build a car. I just bet you could, dear. What the? That is, if there wasn't no women around to help. Oh, Henry, now, please don't act like that. I don't think it's fair. Henry, come around here and talk to me. I've got so much to say to you. Stop hammering. I'm helping, Henry. Say, haven't you got some place to go? When the car was finished. Well, it's all finished now, Miss Lennox. Good, then we can talk. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Henry. Henry, I wouldn't try to help you if you didn't want me to. Say, listen, now that I think of it, what right you got to be talking like that? Ain't you engaged to one of them dukes or something? Well, not anymore, Henry. I've broken it off. You don't think after last night... It's no use. This sort of changes things. I guess we just kind of forgot. The beach and the water and the moon shining down. That's what it was, moonshine. <laughs> you ain't got no cause to be crying, honey. It's all right. Well, just the moonshine, I tell you. Shining down and make you think I was one of them diplomats or millionaires. Or educated like a lawyer, a doctor, a dentist, maybe. But I ain't. I'm just a plain, ordinary, everyday man. And I ain't aiming to marry no millionaire's daughter. Well, why shouldn't you want to marry me? It's not my fault if my father's rich. Anyway, I'm fed up with lawyers and doctors and diplomats. Millionaires make me sick. Henry, I don't care if you're a mechanic. Whatever you are is good enough for me. You don't know what you're talking about. You couldn't marry me. It wouldn't be fair. You mean you don't want me to? I mean, I can't have you, that's all. Henry, oh, we can't talk very well here. Will you meet me down at the beach tonight? No, ma'am. Not tonight or no other time. I'm quitting the job. Oh, no, Henry. No good talking. I'm quitting. Oh. Oh. May I use your telephone, please? Yes, ma'am. Right there. <laughs> This is me. Henry, you did a very bad job. 
job on my car. I'm stuck. I didn't do no such thing. I fixed the car perfect. Well, it was all right when you left here. Well, it ain't my fault. Well, I wish you'd come and fix it. No, I won't come down and fix it. I told you before, I quit. All right, if you want to take money under false pretenses. I'm not taking money under false pretenses. I never done no sloppy work. Oh, all right, all right. I'll come down and see whose fault it was. Where are you? Why, uh, I'm at that abandoned water tower on the Merrick Road. You know, about five miles below Mashapequa. You come, won't you? Hurry. Okay. I suppose I've got to drive you down there. Never mind. I'll go down in my Lizzie. That's your repair kit? Yeah, but I won't need them. Nothing the matter with that car. Henry. I'll say it was. There was nothing the matter with this car. Just a little grease on the distributor. All fixed. Oh, yeah? Very clever of you, Henry. It was stupid of me not to find out the trouble. You couldn't expect no woman to understand about mechanics. No, I don't suppose you could. Want me to start it for you? If you please. You always want to pull this air spark down before you start. It makes it easier. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you, Henry. No trouble at all. Funny how quick an engine can cool off when you let it stand a little while. Yes. I didn't figure I'd have to use the choke on a warm afternoon like this. No. Well, you always want to be careful not to leave this air choke out too long, or the raw gas will wash the oil off the cylinder walls and score them up. Oh, thank you, Henry. There ain't nothing the matter with this car. I can see that. It's bound to start. Oh, yes, Henry. Ain't run out of gas, have you? Well, the indicator says three quarters full. How about water? Oh, I just put a whole lot in. I'll have a look just the same. Oh, is that where you put the water, Henry? Where did you put it? Why, um, right there, where you always do. Oh, right there, eh? Where you always do. Yes. If you was a man, I'd sock you right on the nose. Oh, uh, Henry, don't, don't stop me. Did I do wrong? Oh, no, you didn't do wrong. You just do things different, that's all. You didn't happen to put ten gallons of gasoline in the radiator, did you? Where is the radiator, Henry? Oh, shut up. I gotta go get a car and tow you out of here. But, Henry, you're not gonna leave me just sitting here, are you? It'll be dark in a couple of minutes. Where is the radiator?
don't think it's going to be so easy for me, do you? I hope not. I hope you just fade away. What's the use of talking like that? You know it ain't fit that we should spice up, and what ain't fit I don't do. Well, why isn't it fit? Well, think of the hullabaloo it would make. Oh, what of it? I've been in the papers all my life. Well, I ain't. I don't aim for us to be nobody's comic strip. Give people a laugh for their morning coffee. You wouldn't care about that if you really loved me. I wouldn't really love you if I didn't care about it. Well, I can't make you, Henry. I don't want you to, honey. I'd rather be your husband than, than Governor of Missouri. Well, I should think so. Cheer up, baby. You look like a thunder cloud. These theatrical guys have cast you for an off-stage noise if you're not careful. I shouldn't have come, Billy. Bertie was so mad when I told him there's no telling what he might do. Look, which is the better pal to you, me or Bertie? Lord Rockett, talk to me. Uh, yes, madam. Uh, right this way. I wish you'd stay to supper, Arthur, after all your trouble. No, no, no. No end better if I were to leave them here with you for a while. You see, if I were here, they'd be too, uh, well, too impressed to be natural. Yes. Yes, that'll do, waiter. Enter. Why, girls, I am so pleased to see you. Hello, Rocky. The Grand Duke in person, Alice. Not a picture. Hey, Miss O'Neill. You know, I've heard a lot about you, Miss O'Neill. Thank you, Lord Rockingham. She's gotten a load of you, too, baby. Well, girls, I want you to meet my friend, uh, Mr. William. Miss O'Neill and Miss Montgomery. How do you How do? do, you do? And, uh, Mr. Vincent. Uh, pardon me, I didn't get the name. Vincent. Lionel Vincent. Lionel? I bet you're the king of beasts, you great big wild thing. Well, uh, I have sad news for you, girls. I'm afraid I must be popping. Hey, we'll see you later, Arthur. Righty-ho. Have a jolly time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sit, sit. Won't you sit down, Miss O'Neill? Thanks. And, uh, yes, uh, Lionel. How that man gets from place to place, I don't know. I was always taught human muscles couldn't work without getting messages from a brain. <laughs> I see you're not without perspicacity. What nice girl is. Oh. <laughs> After all them hot dogs you put away. But that was hours ago. You know, just as well as I do, it ain't fit. Since... Stop talking so much. I'm hungry. Come on, Henry. But listen, this is a swell dump. I can't take you in here. Oh, please. I tell you, it ain't. Oh, please, Henry. Oh, all right. I don't see why I'm so weak. Hey, is Rockingham's party here yet? Uh, steady, young man. I want to know if Rockingham's party's here yet. Bertie! Hello, sis. Wait. Wait. So what's the idea? You want to be in on the massacre? No, you come with us, dear. I have something terribly important to tell you. No, I'm going to stay right here. You heard it, brother. Hey, you want a sock in the eye, too? You're the very fellow I've been wanting to see. Listen, listen, Henry. We've got to find the last name for you, Henry. Uh, how are you going to get married without a last name? <laughs> Don't you worry about that, brother. May we have a private dining room, please? Uh, yes, please. Thank you. You know, Mr. Williams, you don't look to me like theatrical men. No? What do we look like? More like the cloak of the soup tray. What? But there's no harm in being a drummer. It's good, safe work, unless some husband catches you at it, Harry. My name is not Harry. No, I know. But somehow I can't help thinking of you as Harry, talking about drummers, I guess. Remember, I told you about Harry. He was a menace to women, too, you cute little devil. He traveled in BVD. Nonsense. There's a law against that sort of thing. I just love this man. He's so pure. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. I've never seen you on the stage, Miss O'Neill. 
What did you appear in last? Nothing worth mentioning, Mr. Williams. But that she had it all over me. I was supposed to appear in a couple of beads, but they were wax beads. And I'll never forget that July. <laughs> Each pearl a tear, eh? <laughs> Say, oh no, Harry needs me more than you do. I feel a great sorrow has come into his life. <laughs> it has. Oh, Alice, don't you just adore me, man? Oh, Harry is really an angel, Miss Montgomery. He is? What shows is he back? Oh, oh Harry! <laughs> Millie, stop clowning. I'm sure it's not hard to tell you're here for business reasons. If you want a job, ask for it. Here, Betty, you drink this, darling. Here. Uh, no, thanks. Oh, go on, have some coffee, Mr. Mr. What did you say your name was? Uh, Morgan. I told you before, my name's Henry Morgan. Oh, yes, yes. Morgan. Morgan. You related to a bank? <laughs> no, to a garage. My old man owns it. He'll give me half interest any time I go back home to Birdville. Oh, I know. I'm just going to love living in Birdville. No, thank you. Oh, you don't drink? No. You can't blame her, Mr. Williams. Put her boyfriend in a dog show and he'd take the blue ribbon for rum hounds. Millie, that's enough. Oh, I'm not blaming Bertie, kid. I'll bet it's his family's fault he's a spouse. He says he's got an uncle who ought to be cremated. <coughs> oh, my hell, no, God. Oh, stop it. Oh, you don't think you should stop. die. Stop it, I say. Stop oh. it. Stop it. Oh, you're all right, baby. Is this young man very attached to you, Miss O'Neill? Attached? Just like Harry and me. <laughs> Why don't you two dance? No, no, I... I don't care to dance. I... I don't feel well. Maybe it's your liver, Harry. If you dance the way I think you do, it'll do in a world of good. No, no, go away. Go away. Oh, I get it, you little cut-up. You'd rather sit it out with me while they dance. Oh, good heavens, I... I'd love to dance. I never felt more like dancing in all my life. I simply must dance. <gasps> That's my big vital habit. <laughs> I'm very glad that they've left us alone, Miss O'Neill. I have a confession to make. You really didn't look like theatrical men to me, Mr. Williams. Thank you. As a matter of fact, I, I'm a friend of the Lennox family. Oh. I see. That explains this. Yes. They're very worried. I'd be worried, too, if my son drank the way Bertie does. Yes. They didn't realize about that drinking. That's unfortunate. Now, take my advice, Mr. Mr. Morgan. If my little sister wants to marry you, you grab her quick before some other big stiff. I'm going. Don't you think you can forget Rocky for just a minute, sir? I only meant I was going home. You better let us take you, then. You get into the car, honey. I'll wait and pay the check. Don't hold me so tight. Any more of that innocent stuff on me. You know what it is to knock around. Oh, it's terrible. We must go. We must go at once. Well, Harry, what's the matter? Come back here. Run. Run. Harry, don't you love me anymore? I haven't any time now. Just a minute. Run. This is no place for us. We must leave at once. Why, Harry? But... He's gone. Look. Bertie! Since when did you turn into a theatrical agent? I'm sorry, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, eh? <laughs> of course, you wouldn't use your own name. What do you mean, talking like that? That's my business. Bertie, control yourself. You don't understand. Oh, I understand, all right. And if you weren't my father, I... Your father? Yes. My saintly uncle. It makes a pretty picture, doesn't it? I didn't know it was your father, Bertie. No, I suppose not. Bertie, listen to me. I'm here only to save you and this young woman 
from a mistake that you'll regret all the rest of your lives. Oh, so that's it, is it? Well, you know that promise I made you. So let's off. What? My father! Oh. So this is where you spend your evenings. Marion, what are you doing here? Well, as long as this seems to be a family affair, I might as well tell you. I, um, I, well, I've been getting myself engaged to Henry. Who is this young man, Marion? I don't quite place him. I'm Henry Morgan, sir, the mechanic you hired a few days ago. This is more than I can stand. Harry, wait for baby! Oh, come on, sis. There's no use trying to make them understand. Alice, will you marry me tonight? No, Bertie. I won't. So he's gotten around you too, has he? You must be pretty proud of yourself. The only decent thing I've ever wanted in my life, you've taken away from me. Well, now I'm through with you. I'm through with both of you. And now I'm going to the devil. The sooner I get there, the gladder I'll be. Stun. Say, if I ever talked to my old man that way, he'd wail the tower out of me. My children would be better off if I'd done that. Well, nothing you could do would make me change my mind about Henry. But, Marion, this is impossible. I know it's a shock, Dad, but I can't help loving him. No, I suppose not. How about you, Morgan? How can you be sure that she knows her own mind? She's already been engaged to a half a dozen other fellows. Now, listen, Dad, that was different. I know my own mind now. Be still, Marion. I won't be still. You can't make me be still. I'm going to marry him. You heard your father. Be still. All right, honey, if you want me to. But how can we get married if this thing isn't settled? We're not going to be married. We're going to wait. You're a very wise young man. Why can't you be sensible, Marion? Have I ever done anything sensible? Of course, I know it isn't sensible to marry a mechanic and live in Birdsville. But it's my one chance to be somebody real and useful. I'm sick of everything here. I'm bored to death. Wish I'd never been born. Is that any way to talk? Oh, will you marry me then, Henry? Right away. I told you before, we're going to wait. All right. You win. But you'll be sorry. I don't care what becomes of me now. I'll go to the devil with Bertie. I will. You'll see. about or to get excited over. We're not going to arrest anybody here, only those that are drunk and disordered. All right, boys, check up on them. Come on, you. Come on. Come on, you. Come on, you. Come on, you. to the judge. But you can't arrest me. I can't, eh? This is the most immoral act I have ever seen in my life. Immoral act? How <laughs> dare you? Get out. Now, I, I refuse to leave this room. Now, officer, I scarcely know this lady. That's so funny, sister. <laughs> now, officer, you're making a mistake. Oh. You're making, you'll, you'll regret oh, this, officer. Oh, you'll regret this, officer. You're not staying. <laughs> You give me that flag. Hey, that don't belong to you. That's my give job. Me that hey. Give me the flag. Give me the flag. Give me the flag. 
What is it? The place is being raided. The police. Yes, but where's Mary? With Bertie. I just saw them being arrested. They're taking them to the police station. To the police station? Yes. Well, I'll get them out of it all right. Here, Morgan, you take care of this young lady. Yes. They've taken Bertie. And Marion. Let's go. I insist on your calling the attack. This is your attack. <laughs> This is the last straw. Get him. Let's go. This right, will go kill him. Keep quiet. young man, you're guilty of all this. I'm guilty of your immoral conduct? Oh, oh, please, Uncle George. Come on, you. The judge wants to see you. Oh, how nice of him, Michael. I made you impression. Not you. Her. Come on. You two. How about me, officer? Didn't the judge say something about me? Yes, he did. The officer's too much of a gentleman to repeat it. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be in here. It's just like he said it was, Judge. Honest to this. We're almost as much to blame. We should have known they were too excited to take things right. Well, Judge Summer, I hope you get enough bail out of Dad to buy a new jail. Yes, you said you do need one. You might be a little more respectful to Judge Summers. After he was kind enough to get out of bed to come here. Furthermore, no matter how much bail I'm willing to pay, it won't do you any good. Well, what do you mean? It might sober you up a little bit to know that all the offenders are to be held here overnight. Uncle George, Bertie. Think of Uncle George. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle George overnight. <laughs> Whatever you do, Judge, don't keep him in the same cell with me, because I want to get some sleep. No, <laughs> man. Don't you realize what this means? The papers are bound to get hold of this story. Oh, I must have some new photographs taken forward. <laughs> Don't bother to have many taken, sis. In time, we'll be such an old story to the papers, they'll stop featuring us. <laughs> yes. Lucky you're not married to me, Bertie Lennox. You talk like that, well, I... If we were married, there wouldn't be any reason for my talking like that. That's just it. That ain't no excuse at all. Suppose you apologize for talking so smart-like. I won't. You heard me, kid. I'm sorry, Judge Summers. Dad, Betty, suppose you apologize too. I'm ashamed of you. Well, that goes for me too. Now that will do, Jensen. Take them back. Come on, sir. I've already told you that I don't want you to treat my children any differently from the others, Judge Summers, and I don't. I want you to treat them exactly as you treat any other two children. Why, what are you getting at, Mr. Lennox? This. If you knew that tomorrow they were going to be married to two fine young people who would either turn them into useful, happy human beings or, or whale the tar out of them, what would you say? Why, I'd say, Mr. Lennox, that I think it would do them far more good than a night in jail. I was sure you <laughs> would. Now, suppose I go and have a little talk with them and uh, tell them that everything is all right. Thank you. Henry, I've been very foolish and small-minded about this whole business, and I hope you two will forgive me. Of course, Mr. Lennox. Sure, I'll forgive you, Mr. Lennox. But I can't marry your daughter. You can't marry my daughter? And who are you, young man? Great heavens, Kay, what are you doing here? Why shouldn't I be here? Everyone else in my family is, unless Arthur was mistaken. Rockingham, that idiot. Who is this, Bronson? I insist upon knowing. This is Henry Morgan, Carrie, the young mechanic I told you I'd hire. A mechanic? And Marion? Oh, this is too much. I can't bear it. I can't. 
spirit. You don't have to, lady. I just said I wasn't going to marry her. Why, why, how dare you? And this is Miss O'Neill. No doubt Arthur was kind enough to explain about her. But he's caught us, sir. I won't tell you something. I advise you to be careful. She's a much better behaved young woman than your own daughter. And I don't want any difficulty in persuading her to marry our son. In persuading her? You mean to tell me you don't want to marry Bertie? I want to marry Mrs. Lennox. I love him. In spite of the fact he's a drunken little fool. But after tonight I... My son, a drunken little fool? You realize you're talking of a Lennox? Why, think of your family. That's just what I'm doing. My mother would never get over the disgrace if I married a man like Bertie. Oh. My old man feel the same way about marrying. They got pretty high standards back in Birdville. Why, why, you impertinent... Oh, sorry, me. Mrs. Lennox. But you see, I aim to make something out of myself. And I want a wife I can be proud of. I see. You mean that my daughter isn't good enough for you, is that it? Oh, she could be good enough if she tried. You don't understand that, girl. What she needs is to wrestle with something tough and get sweat out. Oh, that's what Betty needs, too. Oh, Bronson, I'm going to be ill, desperately ill. But it seems to me that if you really love them and you realize... It wouldn't that work, that... Mr. Lennox. But I'm depending on you, too. Stop it, Bronson. Are you insane? I have been, but I've recovered. I realize that Marion and Bertie are right. These marriages may be their one big chance. You haven't recovered. You're raving mad, Bronson. Now listen to me, Carrie. It's going to take quite a man to manage Marion. And Henry seems to be that man. As for Bertie, Alice is the only person who has any decent influence over him. I wouldn't have it long, Mr. Lennox. Not when Bertie has all the money he has. If he had something to work for, it would be different. He loves me enough to do it if he had to. But he doesn't have to. She said I'm a mouthful. Oh, I like money, all right. But when I'm marrying, I want to be the guy that has it. Well, how's Marion going to be a good wife unless she respects me? And how's she going to respect me if she has more than me? I see. It all boils itself down to the fact that you won't marry my children because they have money. I was going to be fool enough to do it. But now I realize what a handful Marion is. You've got to excuse me. That's the way I feel about it, too, Mr. Lennox. Why? Why is it? Your children can't believe it's true, Mr. Lennox. They refuse to leave their cells unless these two young people go after them. It isn't true. What do you think, Judge Summers? My son and my daughter have been refused by a, a chorus girl and a common laborer. They're not good enough for them. Well, by heavens, if they're as worthless as all that, they're not good enough for me. Wrong. What do you mean, sir? I mean that I see them for the first time as they are. Selfish, spoiled, useless little fools without a bit of good in them. Don't talk like that about my children. No, Betty's not that bad, Mr. Lennox. Neither's Marion. We'll see whether they are or not. They haven't appreciated one thing I've done for them. All right, let them get out and make good on their own. Do I understand you right, sir? You do if you understand that I'm through with my children. Wrong. I never want to see them again. And I'll never give them another penny until I'm sure that they've come to their senses. Do you hear that, Henry? You ain't got the heart of a rattlesnake. What you're doing to this poor little girl is the lowest, down, meanest, most contemptible thing I ever heard in my life. Judge, that wedding's on. I'll show him how much I care for his rotten money. So will I. Bertie needs me now and just try and take him away from me. Why, Mr. Lennox, you mean that you... Why, certainly. Masterly, Mr. Lennox, masterly. You know this fine stuff in those two young people? Yes. Why, Mrs. Lennox, what? I'll get some ammonia. Oh, no, don't bother, Judge. Come on, Carrie. It's not going to do you a bit of good this time. What did you say, Bronson? You heard me, kid. Why, Bronson? Yes, yes. You know what I mean. <laughs> oh, gee, I love you. You're such a fool. <laughs>